Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke 1, 67 through 80. This is the prophecy of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, that is John, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit. And he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Mercy is a compassionate and forgiving response to those who may not necessarily deserve it, but really do need it. Tender mercy is a very gentle mercy. God has responded to the human family with a gentle mercy, even though the human family easily deserves worse as we look at war and violence. God's tender mercy is for all those who live in darkness and who live under the shadow of death, which is to say all of us. God's tender mercy is the dawning day that brings light to our darkness. And this light will guide our path into the way of peace. The dawning light that guides us is the Savior whose birth we look forward to celebrating in this time of Advent. That same Savior who Isaiah long, long ago called the Prince of Peace. And the most significant way that we can prepare for honoring the birth of the Savior, baby Jesus, is, what, is to do what Zechariah said when he proclaimed that his son, who was to be named John, would be the prophet of the Most High. John would pe teach people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. And that knowledge is what enables people to prepare themselves and their community for the ways of the Savior. So let us not deny our sin, but instead confess it. The darkness of sin cannot stand in the dawn of light that takes over. Because that dawning light is forgiveness. The tender mercy of God is that you are forgiven. You are welcomed home. You are loved. So accept that you are forgiven and be at peace with God. And as forgiven people, let us also forgive ourselves. If God can forgive us, then so can we forgive ourselves. And so be at peace with yourself. And as forgiven people, let us forgive others. If God can forgive others, then so can we forgive others. Be at peace with others. Now Zechariah, he had a tough time finding his peace with God. 
He was an aging priest married to Elizabeth who had never been able to have children. And they were past the time of childbearing age. And he was taking his turn as priest in the sanctuary to give a, an incense offering as the people in their ceremony stood outside and prayed. And while he was in there by himself, he had a vision. The angel Gabriel came to him and told him that his prayer for a child had been answered after all these years. And the child would be named John and would be able to minister with the power of Elijah. And he would prepare the way of the Lord. Well, Gabriel's message was rather like the good news of forgiveness. The past was being put to rest. And a new future was going to open up. He couldn't believe the good news, and he resisted Gabriel. Gabriel wasn't having it, so he said, Zechariah, you're going to be mute, unable to speak until the child is born. And you know what? It may be that being able to, uh, unable to speak for nine months was the best thing that could have happened to Zechariah. The silence gave him the opportunity to look within his own self. And after Elizabeth became pregnant, he really did need to take the time to ponder that vision and its meaning. And he needed to take time to take a good long look at himself and question his resistance to the angel. And he needed to take time to prepare himself for a new future, a new future of parenthood a long time dream that he had lost that only God could restore. So, in a way, we can be like Zechariah when we find ourselves resisting the good news of forgiveness. It may be helpful for us to be mute, symbolically speaking, to be quiet, as in our times of centering prayer when we don't speak but we listen. But we need time to ponder what we need forgiveness for. We need time to explore our hesitations to receive and give it forgiveness. We need time to make that leap of acceptance that we are forgiven. We need time to embrace the new future that only forgiveness can open up because we are no longer prisoner of the past. So may we take the time that we need to embrace forgiveness and in this way make our contribution to the ways of the Lord as we look forward to celebrating the birth of the Christ child. And when it is time for us to speak again, may we join Zechariah when he spoke again when John was born. May his words be ours. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. Amen.